Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. Professor Chaz here, the lab coat's on back order, and it's time for episode 9 of our Pokemon Stadium playthrough. I am unlike the three you've already met, as we take on Karen of the Elite Four here in Gym Leader Castle. We left off last weekend on a bit of a cliffhanger. I say last weekend in sort of air quotes because I am recording this episode immediately after recording last Sunday's episode. For you guys, though, it's been about a week. But I am here at Karen, the last of the Elite Four, before we take on the champion. She is the Dark-type trainer, and as you can see, all those Dark-types. We've got Dark-type Umbreon, Dark-type Murkrow, and the rest. So, who shall I bring against these Pokémon? Machamp would be good for the Gengar because of Earthquake, but I do not want to lead Machamp just yet. I'm thinking Blaze might be decent. At least we can go for some good fire attacks on the two Grass-type Pokémon. I'm going to lead Blaze because he is fast. Zapdos might not be bad as well. I don't want to bring Sheldon because... Two Grass-types. I could bring Fluffy, though. She can get some Ice Punch off on those Grass-types as well. She doesn't have anything super effective against anything else, unfortunately. So hang on. I'm going to bring Machamp, as I say, in case the Gengar comes in. It could have Psychic, but I think we could handle a non-stab Psychic from Gengar, and I don't think it could handle an Earthquake. So Blaze, Machamp... I want to bring Machamp anyway for some vital throws against the Dark-type. Murkrow? Not so much, of course. It is going to be resistant. Or part resistant. Final Pokemon. Since we do have potential Drill Peck super effectiveness on Victory Bell and Vileplume, I'm bringing Zapdos once again. Let us do this against Karen. And now the challenger faces Karen. The last of the Elite Four. Will the challenger be able to thwart her dark type Pokemon and taste sweet victory? I certainly hope so, Mr. Announcer Guy. I wonder, do you think that announcer is the same guy that's always going, Yo, champion making! This battle's going to be interesting! So we see Umbreon. Now, I know you can learn Psychic, but I'm going to switch into Machamp to resist your dark type attacks and get some super effective vital throw. Having said that, would they switch into Gengar? I'm going to wait and see. Let's see what they go for here. That's not good. Alright. I am expecting we're going to see Gengar. I'm going to play Risky. I'm going to go with an Earthquake right now. I mean, as Risky as it is, we are... Oh no, I forgot she's this kind of a trainer. It's Whitney all over again. Confusion hurt ourselves. All right. Now then, we can switch to Zapdos, who is immune to the attract, of course. Zapdos has no gender, despite the fact that I naturally tend to refer to my Zapdos and Articuno both as male. You'll hear me say, oh, Zapdos, he has this, and Articuno, he's got that. I try usually to be very careful with that, using my pronouns when referring to the genderless Pokemon. Because something that was very... Oh, it does have Psychic. Something that was very important for me to keep in mind with uh, Mewtwo is the fact that it is genderless. And I told you many times before about the Pokemon stories that I used to write, sort of... How are you faster than Zapdos? Zapdos has been continually outsped by things that it shouldn't be outsped by. I really overestimate Zapdos' speed, apparently. Anyway, back to talking about my stories there. It was important for me as the, uh, you know, writing these stories to keep in mind that... Machim. I'm trying to think, who should I switch to? But anyway, um... So when it comes time, like you know, referring to like Pokemon and well, just characters in a story, and you have to use pronouns, I wanted to keep in mind that Mewtwo technically is genderless, and the fact that it was created and not born, I thought it is sort of more of an, I guess, not really an honor, so to speak, but uh, just in memory of the the fact that it was a creative Pokemon, not a bred Pokemon, that I refer to it always as it. And I know a lot of people tend to stop this! Anyway, I know a lot of people tend to see Mewtwo as male, unless you're talking about the new one that's in the Genesect movie, because the female voice makes it seem like it's a female one, and I never really understood that, like... Mewtwo was like the one... Mewtwo was one Pokemon, right? Like, nope, there haven't been a bunch of Mewtwo created that I know of, so why exactly... Yes, we break through. Why exactly did they have a different voice for the second Mewtwo? Because they, they made it basically seem like it was a whole different Pokemon. 
I don't know. I never really bought into that. I still like to pretend in my own head that the Mewtwo was the same one. We're getting luck with Paralysis. I'm happy about that. Can we get lucky again with the Attract? Yes! Alright, so, in my experience, Attract has a much higher percentage rate of activating. <laughs> well, you know what? It's low enough now that Zapdos can get the KO. I'm expecting Confuse Ray coming next, though. No, wait, you know what? I'm now expecting Moonlight. Because I'm switching out. Anyway, what I was talking about Mewtwo, yeah. I always thought Mewtwo should be the same Mewtwo from the first movie, Mewtwo Returns, and the uh, Genesect movie. But I don't know if it's supposed to be a different one or not. Feel free to leave that in a comment below if anyone knows for sure either or what it's supposed to be. Let's go with... I, we're confused. I don't want to waste time going for double teams right now. I was thinking of setting up, but we might hurt ourselves. I just want to try to knock out this Umbreon. It is annoying. Down it goes. Seriously, 1 HP. How did you do that? Out of my way, Umbreon. And essentially, at this point, Machamp is kind of a throwaway... Wait, nope, he's got Earthquake for Gengar. Not quite a throwaway Pokemon just yet. Bio Plume, you can take... Well, what are you going to do to us? I'm going to leave Zapdos in first to see what it does. I'm going to go for... We're confused. Never mind. I'm switching out. Let's switch to... Uh, hang on. No. I'm leaving Zapdos in. I'm going to Thunder Wave again just to get the status affliction. Because I don't know what it's going to try to do to Blaze if it comes in. We get through the confusion once more. We land Thunder Wave. You might have a Curse Cure Berry. Which you don't. And Stun Spore. We have the Bright Powder. Doesn't matter. I didn't think so. You were hoping for that. I kind of expected that was going to happen because, like, we broke through the confusion and we're, we're going to hit ourselves here, though. We have to. It's only fair. Normally, I would be upset, but it's like, you know what? The good luck was helping us a lot, so we gotta, we gotta take our hits when we can, when we're do them, I suppose. So. With Zapdos paralyzed, he's not going to outspeed. And again, there's he, not it. But Zapdos is not going to outspeed the opponent. I'm going to leave him in, go for a drill pack, see if we can at least do some damage. No, we're fully paralyzed. I was going to say, we broke through. Oh, fully paralyzed on that side too. So that was four turns of confusion. I think that's the maximum that you can have. Yes, and we break through the paralysis. All right, get some good damage off. Nice. I'm going to say probably Fire Punch will finish it at this point. Sludge Bomb will drop Zapdos, of course. Bright Powder. Yes! All right. Come on. Break through. No. All right. I do have to accept that Zapdos is going to fall right here. Unless the Bright Powder kicks in again. But Blaze can come in for a simple Fire Punch, dropping the Vile Plume. And I doubt she would have also brought the Victory Bell. But if she did... I'll accept that. We can go for some fire attacks on that also. But come on, we're doing all right here. Blaze is back in action. Fire punch away, drop the vile plume. Come on, your special defense shouldn't be able to handle this. We got 140 some attack stat. Special attack. Down it goes. All right, one Pokemon remains. If it's the Gengar, I might want to try the Dragon Breath for the chance to paralyze. Is it a 1 in 3 chance to paralyze or 1 in 10? It's Murkrow. That I probably want to try to paralyze also. We do have the Dragon Fang to power it up. We are faster. That is good. Murkrow I thought was kind of fast, but Blaze is obviously quicker. Paralysis. Yes. I wanted that because if Machamp has to come in, I don't want this thing outspeeding going for it. Does it learn Drill Pack? I don't want its Wing Attack. But hopefully Blaze can clean this up himself. Fire Punch. One more hit brings the Murkrow down. Two turns of full paralysis. All right. This was a lucky go on our side, but I'll take it. One trainer remains on our quest to get Fluffy the uh, Moonlight attack. I'm hoping it's after you beat the champion. You don't need to do the post-gym leader stuff, which I haven't even mentioned yet. But there's other stuff you'll see at some point. But let's worry about that if and when we get to it. We took down Karen after a long struggle against that Umbreon. No, I can't win. How did you become so strong? With a lot, a lot of random number generated luck. That's my strategy. Here we go. 
It looks like even the Elite Four couldn't stop you. I'm your last opponent in the Johto Castle. Hello, Lance. Here's where the fun begins. Alrighty. Champion Lance. I am still the champion. I won't hold anything back. And we see... Dragonite, Tyranitar, Charizard, Steelix, Gyarados, Aerodactyl. Huh, <sighs> what do we do? Technically, he's a cheater. You can't have a level 50 Dragonite, sir. Actually, you had like a bunch of level 40-some Dragonite in the silver, so what am I talking about? Anyway, um... Water is good against a lot of these things, and Sheldon has Ice Punch. We're going to lead him for the defenses. Let us bring Zapdos in case we need to deal with the Gyarados, because Sheldon can't do much there. Possibly Fluffy. She has Ice Punch as well. Good against a few of these things. We're going to try this. Who am I bringing? Sheldon, Zapdos, Fluffy. Let's give this a try. We have enough time in this episode for a few attempts. I'm turning my volume up. Listen to this music. Charizard. Tyranitar. All right. Whew. Look at the throne back there, too. So, obviously, Surf is the way to go here. We are faster than Tyranitar. So, I'm underestimating... Or no, I'm overestimating Zapdos' speed. I'm underestimating Sheldon's speed all the time. What is happening? Rock slide. Bring it on. Ow. All right. All right. Not bad. Not bad. That was about 50, almost 60 damage or so. I love this music. I didn't even remember... Didn't even remember this music's in the game. I don't want to talk. I want to hear this. Hello, Umbreon. I remember you. Anyway, one HP survival. We will get the KO, though. I can't stop singing this or humming to the tune. All right. Surf will finish up the Tyranitar. First one is going to drop. What comes in next? So, Sheldon's still good against the Steelix, the Aerodactyl. What else? There, Dragonite. He could Ice Punch. Steelix. All right, we're gonna stay in and surf. That's our best bet right now. I think Steelix might be faster. I'm still underestimating Sheldon's speed. Come on, half damage? Yes. All right. We're doing this. Earthquake, this is stab, but our defense is nice. Ooh, all right. We hung in there. One more surf brings Steelix down. Yeah, I was going to send in uh, Blaze, but I didn't bring Blaze. Fun fact. All right, so surf away. As long as we're faster this turn again, retreat. That being the case, I can save Sheldon for a quick knockout on Steelix at the very end. What comes in? It's Dragonite. All right. I think maybe I bring Zapdos next. I can Thunder Wave if I can survive some hits. We got the Ice Punch on Fluffy, our Dragon Slayer. How cool is this? I'm bringing the Dragon Slayer against the Dragon Trainer. Come on, if we can save Sheldon, if we can take the Dragonite down with Zapdos and Fluffy, Sheldon easily finishes the Steelix. Go, buddy! I'm getting pumped up, this is awesome! Dragon Breath, do not paralyze me! That's right, Electric types cannot be paralyzed in Gen 6. This is Gen 2, so that has no effect, but through it in its entire career as a Dragon Flying type, Dragonite can be paralyzed. Do not have a Paralyzed Cure Berry. Dodge it! Aw, oh, it works for Pikachu. Anyways, I should specify Ash's Pikachu. Pikachu, dodge it! And he dodges it. Now, I don't know if I mentioned this or not before. I shouldn't really focus on too much outside of this battle, because this is epic, but... 
Notice how in the anime, Ash and even other trainers will say, you know, Pikachu, dodge the hit! And then they would dodge it. That was never a thing you could do in the games until Pokemon Ami became a thing. When you have max affection with your Pokemon, then dodging was a thing that could happen. But here we see the Dragon Slayer doing what she does best, slaying dragons with an ice punch. And Steelix is the last Pokemon. I'm going to leave Fluffy in to go for some more ice punching. Down goes the Dragonite. Yes! All right. And I'm going to say we have it because simple fact is Steelix cannot survive a battle against Sheldon. If it can even handle an ice punch. It's neutral damage. Ground is weak, but Steel is resistant. Let's do this. We are faster. Can we knock out? But if not, freeze? Not quite a knockout, but I think at max HP, we're going to survive this. Go ahead, Earthquake. We have nice defense. Yes! All right. Ice Punch away. Bop. <sighs> and that's the Gym Leader Castle. You conquered the Gym Leader Castle! I have accomplished something in Stadium 2! Thank you for the battle, Lance! Nice one! You got me. You are magnificent! Thank you! Now then, we should be able to learn a move. I concede defeat. You might have what it takes to prevail over Kanto's gym leaders. That's the post-game, or post-gym leader castle that I was talking about. You can access the Kanto gym leaders. But, let's see if we do earn that move tutor thing that I was talking about. Volume's a little too loud right now. Let's turn this down a bit. Here's a special present for you. Congratulations, you beat the champ. A previously forgotten TM can be learned once again. Here's your chance. One of your party Pokemon can now relearn a TM. That's going to be Fluffy. She's going to learn Moonlight. Now, I'm pretty sure, bear with me here, I think I can heart scale Sing back on in a later generation, but just to be sure, I am going to do a quick search. Okay, Google. Clefable moveset Gen 3. Generation 3 learn set for Clefable, it does get Sing. Alright, so for the time being, I can easily replace Sing. Sing will be forgotten, Moonlight relearned. There we go. This is the original move tutor of the Pokemon series. Before heart scales were a thing, this is how you had to relearn previous moves. Fluffy wants to forget Sing. I don't know why it needs a big laser beam technology device to do this. One, two, and poof. Clefable forgot Sing, and she learned Moonlight. Now, this was a lot of work around to do because technically, as I've said before, the Pokemon I have in my Gen 6 game right now, soon Gen 7, all were originally brought forth from the Fire Red game in which Moonlight is a natural move that Clefairy learns as it levels up. Of course, when you evolve into Clefable, they no longer learn moves like that. Moonlight is a move that a Clefable cannot relearn from Gen 3 onward. So, just to make Fluffy fit in sync, or this version of Fluffy to fit in sync with the actual Fluffy that's in my game right now, I wanted to get Moonlight on here a certain way. I didn't want to just do some sort of like a, a you know, hacking the game or something like that. I wanted to actually go through a lot of process. This just worked out well because I had to go through Gym Leader Castle anyway to try to accomplish everything I could possibly do in uh, Pokemon Stadium 2. All that being said, Fluffy now has the Moonlight Attack. Thank you very much for coming. I can go back and take on the Elite Four as much as I want and relearn some moves for Pokemon, which I might do before going into Gen 3. Now, of course, you're seeing this probably after the Gen 3 playthrough begins. I'm not sure when I'm going to start uploading Sapphire, but as I said, this is recorded right after last Sunday's episode of Stadium 2, so all that being said, behind the scenes stuff you don't need to worry about. I might have some new moves on Pokemon that you might not have expected when Gen 3 starts up. But that is it. Fluffy has the move, and we have the Kanto Gym Leaders now. Hello, Blue, Gary, Adrian, whatever. So you're the trainer who conquered Johto Castle. Come on, I'll take you on anytime. Can I beat them in any order? I don't think so. I think I probably got to go through them in order. 
No, I can take on whoever I want. All right. So at this point, I'm going to say leave a comment down below. Let me know, do you want me to do the Kanto Gym Leader Castle next? Or do you want me to sort of mix things up a little bit and go into some stadium battles? Because I'm willing to do that, you know, whichever order you want to see this stuff in. And it's going to be for tomorrow's episode. This is going to be Saturday's episode of next weekend. So that being the case, I'm going to hold off and record the next episode Saturday at some point after you guys have checked this one out and had some time to give your feedback because what I'm leaning towards doing I probably want to sort of mix things up a little bit and go into some gym leader not gym leader uh, Pokemon Stadium challenges Just to sort of break things up a little bit I can also check out the mini games as well, which you know what? Let's take a quick look into the mini games right now just to see what they have to offer because we have time in this episode um, There are 12 mini games that you can play with adorable Pokemon come play the mini games of your choice. There's a quiz Tell you what, we're gonna hold off on the mini games for now. Let's go for a one-player quiz. Let's just let's just do a little bit of a brain testing right now. Take the single-player Pokemon quiz challenge. How many questions? How many correct answers can you get before time runs out? Uh, normal, 15 questions. We're gonna stick with the normal for now. I am a Pokemon professor. I could easily handle the hard mode. The record is five questions. Let's just start with the normal and see what they have to offer. Try to beat the record for the most correct answers in 100 seconds. You'll lose 10 seconds for each incorrect answer. Use the C buttons to answer, okay? Lose 10 seconds, blah, blah, blah. Press start to quit. All right, quick draw quiz. Let's begin. Which Pokemon blocks Route 36? Suda Widow. Which of these Pokemon only exists as a male? Hitmonlee. This is where all my Gen 1, Gen 2 knowledge comes through. Corsola is a pink Pokemon. Which Pokemon is pink? That's not an easy question. Misty is the gym leader of which gym? Cerulean Gym. Which of the following is a Bug Steel type? That is Fortress. As soon as I saw Bug Steel, I knew right away. Which Pokemon catches eggs in minigame? We haven't seen that yet, but we'll be doing that at some point. If this Pokemon evolves, Geodude into Graveler. Which Pokemon is larger than Drowsy? <laughs> that's kind of obvious. Good old Lapras. Well, we can beat the 15 record mark. Which Pokemon has a name that reads the same from both Left and Girafferig? A palindrome, if you will. How many tails does Gligar have? Just the one. It has kind of like two points on it, but only one distinct tail. Magneton is a silver Pokemon. Which Pokemon is a light blue? See? I was going to wait to see what color they said. I thought they were going to sort of mix things up a little bit. They're tricky. Where is Unknown's Habitat? The Ruins of Alphabets, or Alf. If this Pokemon evolves once, what will it be? Noctowl. Oh, smarty, we'll bring you back in Sapphire at some point. Swine up is a brown Pokemon. Which Pokemon is brown? Kabutops. Hope this isn't too boring for you out there, but I just need some filler material for the time being. What category is Ursaring listed as in the Pokedex? I'm going to say Hibern Hibernant. The Hibernant Pokemon. Where can Lugia be caught? The World Islands. Or where can it knock out your Hypno? The World Islands. Which Pokemon can learn Triple Kick? That'd be the spinning Hitmon Top. Are you guys following along out there answering these questions? Hopefully. Which of the following is a Dragon Flying type Pokemon? Oh, Dragonite. The, uh, the Ice Punch was so good against you. Who gives you the Rising Badge, Claire? Which of these items is required for a Pokemon to evolve into Porygon 2? The upgrade. Which we have. We really had a Porygon. We have that in silver. Which Pokemon knows Mimic when in the wild? I believe Pseudo Widow, yeah. Graveler is which type of Pokemon? Rock and Ground. Water Dragon. That'd be interesting. That could be the Alola form. Where can ho -Oh be caught? Uh, Tin Tower. I've got one second left. Oh, never mind. Time's up. We've got 23 questions, though. Not bad. And it filled up the time nicely. We've earned the highest score to date, so I'll make a record of it. Congratulations. You should get items for this. That'd be kind of cool. Let's go ahead and quit out of here for now. So that is going to wrap up the episode for today. Like I said, just let me know. Do you want me to go into the Kanto Gym Leaders next, or do you want me to do the Stadium, mix things up? And either way, I might spend the next episode starting off with a little bit of maybe some mini games, perhaps, see what else I can check out here in Pokemon Stadium 2. But I am proud to say, and I'm happy to say, we have accomplished 
Gym Leader Castle. We got that Moonlight Attack. That was my main purpose for doing that, as I've said many times. So feel free to leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of the episode and the awesome battles against the Elite Four and the Champion. Once again, I'm just happy that we managed to accomplish it. That all being said, Professor Chaz is now signing off. Come on back tomorrow for the next episode of Stadium 2 for the weekend. Until then, I'm signing off, and I'm going to catch you next time.